Robin. Let's begin with a simple explanation of the class trial. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is and vote for who done it. If you vote correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong person, I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and that person will earn the right to leave this island. Oh well, who cares about this boring explanation? Let's get on with it already! I don't mind starting the trial, but I don't really have a grasp of how the case played out. You know, because I was asleep the whole time. Even if you do grasp it, you're just gonna confuse the heck out of us, aren't you? But Nagito's not alone. I don't really get it either. You're fine. Your head's empty anyway. Empty head? Huh. What's wrong with that? Listen up! The emptier your head, the more dreams you can stuff inside it, you know? Anyway... We shouldn't proceed with the trial if those two can't participate in the arguments. Since he's the first witness, why don't we ask Hajime to explain the incident and the sequence of events? Then, let's start with when we split into the hospital team and motel team because of the despair disease. The hospital team consisted of Nagito, Ibuki, and Akane, who were infected, and Mikan, Fuyuhiko, and me. The other five in the motel team were... Myself, Gundam, Kazuichi, Chiaki, and Hyoko. Spending the night at the hospital was prohibited, so Hajime and I had to sleep at our cottages. I woke up at my cottage on the day the incident happened. Mikan came by to wake me up and told me that Nagito had recovered from his symptoms. We immediately headed over to the hospital, and after we confirmed his recovery, I made Mikan rest in the on-call room since she hadn't slept all night, while I waited in the hospital lobby. And then, I saw the incoming signal light on the surveillance camera blinking before our scheduled time. When I pressed the button to turn on the monitor, what appeared on screen was... A video of someone wearing a hospital gown and a hemp bag on their head, climbing a stepladder. Amazing! That's such a hard-pounding story! And then what did you do, Hajime? I, I tried to stop them, of course. I rushed out of the hospital and ran to where the video was being recorded, the music venue. But it was too late. By the time I arrived, the person wearing the hemp bag on their head was already hanging from the ceiling. I thought I should tell the others right away, so I headed to the motel. Why the motel? Because it was close to the music venue. And unlike the hospital, there were more able-bodied people there. At least, that's what I thought. But the only person who came with me was Chiaki. But I remember feeling a little relieved because not long after, we met up with Mikan and Fuyuhiko. We were also looking for Ibuki since she disappeared from our sight. After I rested for a bit, I started counting everyone at the hospital. And then, I noticed... Ibuki was gone, so I, I sprinted out of the hospital. Coincidentally, I ran into Fuyuhiko, so I fled with him in various ways to see if he could help me out. Various ways? Don't say it like that and confuse people. After I heard from those two that Ibuki disappeared, I had a feeling she was the person wearing the hemp bag. So I immediately led them to the music venue. But the door wouldn't open. Since we had no other option, the four of us broke down the door. And when that happened, we didn't just find Ibuki's body. We also found Hyoko's. And not just that. Her body was taped to a pillar. That's when we heard the body discovery announcement. Not once, but twice in a row. And so, we decided to lower the hanged body, didn't we? When we removed the hint bag, just as we feared, it was Ibuki. So that's how the case played out. Thank you. 
I understood it very easily. Well, it's clear what the problem with this case is. When Hajime left the music venue, who... Wait, how do I know anything Hajime just said is true? Sorry, I'm only being impartial right now. And the story I just heard is clearly suspicious. Hajime, if you're the only one who saw the hanging video and the first one to discover Ibuki's body, then you could be lying as much as you want right now, right? Lie? Why would I lie? Obviously. So you could make us ignore what might be an inconvenient truth to you. Do you doubt me? If you're not lying, I would like you to prove it. Come on, try to prove it to me. Prove you're not the killer. Hajime's testimony is clearly suspicious. If Hajime's testimony is a lie, then the fact that Ibuki hung herself... That would also be a lie. I don't think I can deny that possibility. After all, Hajime is the only witness. Why would Hajime lie? Well, obviously, because he's the killer. Did Hajime kill both of them? The fact that the bodies were imitating the movie means it probably is Hajime's fault. Hajime's testimony is clearly suspicious. If Hajime's testimony is a lie, then the fact that Ibuki hung herself... That would also be a lie. I don't think I can deny that possibility. After all, Hajime is the only witness. Why would Hajime lie? Well, obviously, because he's the killer. Did Hajime kill both of them? The fact that the bodies were imitating the movie. No, that's wrong! I'm not the killer! I mean, there's no way I'd be able to imitate that movie. Of course you're not. I already knew that. Huh? Before the incident, Hajime had never watched that movie. His invitation ticket is proof of that. Each person only received one ticket, and they're marked with a stamp that shows the date and time. Isn't that right, Monokuma? Yes! No mistakes there! Which means there's no way Hajime, who never saw the movie, could commit murders that imitated it. Or, did anyone tell him what happens in the movie? Of course no one did, right? Hold on a sec! You're the one who brought this up in the first place! Nagito, what are you doing? Well, since we're opening with your witness testimony, I thought we should solidify the foundation. It also provides a good warm-up. What warm-up? This isn't a game, you know. Don't get mad. I just think warming up is really important. Especially since this isn't a game. What a waste of time. Well, I knew it would turn out like this anyway. Now then, since we know Hajime's testimony is reliable, let us move on to the arguments. So this means Ibuki definitely climbed the stepladder all by herself, right? Yeah, I'm positive. And that seals it! Ibuki committed suicide! If Ibuki committed suicide, then who killed Hiyoko? Hmm, a murder coincidentally occurring in the same place as a suicide... ain't possible, huh? Like I said before, it's pretty clear what the problem with this case is. The killer murdered Hiyoko while Hajime was gone. So all we gotta do is establish who could have possibly done that. Then let's ask Hajime, how long would you say you were away from the music venue? I could...
Shun has been gone for more than 10 minutes. So they killed Hyoko and taped her up within 10 minutes? There's no way that's possible. That's why the killer stalled for time by making the music venue a closed room. Hmm? What do you mean, a closed room? The killer blocked the venue door from the inside to try and keep us from entering right away. However, that door is the only entrance to the music venue, right? If they blocked the door from the inside, the killer would not have been able to leave either. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Which means, when we broke down the venue door, the killer was still inside. <laughs> they were? If that's the case, the only suspicious people are those who don't have an alibi for that time. And that's you two! Sonia and Kazuichi! <laughs> Me too? What the hell? Why's it gonna be us? The others all have alibis. Chiaki, Mikan, Hajime, and I all broke down the venue door together. Gundam met up with Hajime at the motel right before that. And if Akane and Nagito were laid up in the hospital, the only person that leaves is one of you. There's another person who doesn't have an alibi. You know, Nekomaru. Me too! Talking like, huh? You're kidding, right? You're not up to something weird, are you? Please stop making bad jokes. Anyway, if the killer was hiding inside the venue, we should obviously doubt the people who don't have alibis. What a wicked way of backing us into a wall! Is this his professional skill? killer was still inside the music venue. By locking the door from the inside, they tried to keep us from getting in. It seems they were trying to stall for time. How did they lock the door? That door should not have had a lock. The lock was on the floor in front of the door. Are you talking about the broken drumstick? You can use that as a bolt to lock the door. By doing that, the killer who was hiding inside waited till we gathered together and suddenly appeared. So they looked like they had just rushed over. I have seen this in serial crime dramas. The killer was still inside the music venue. By locking the door from the inside. No, that's wrong! Hold on a sec. There's also a possibility that the door was locked from the outside. From the outside? How? It has a semi-transparent glob stuck to the venue door. Maybe that's what they used. Semi-transparent glob. Like rubber, maybe? I see! Semi-transparent glob. Must have been blue. Blue? Yeah, I think so too. It had a firm, gel-like chewiness. And I could smell workshop chemicals the moment I put it in my mouth. Based on all that, I'm certain it was glue. I didn't know glue was edible! I believe it is not something one typically eats. That glue was only applied to the areas where both doors touched. By pouring it in the gaps of the closed door, it must have sealed the venue door from the outside. And thanks to that, a glob of glue was left where the door was stuck. Yep, it fits perfectly. 
But if you just stick them together with glue, you'll be able to break down the glue easily, you know? That doesn't really matter. The killer only did that to make us think the door was locked from the inside. What'd you say? First of all, didn't that drumstick we found seem really obvious? Almost unnaturally so? It was so obvious that it makes more sense to think the killer placed it as a diversion. Are you saying the drumstick was a trap the killer set on purpose? Then I... I totally fell for that fucking trap! Apologize to Miss Sonia! And me! However, you're not allowed to slice open your stomach this time! In a quarrel, both sides are to blame! That's why it's better to just have no sides at all! So... During the 10 minutes Hajime left the venue, the killer murdered Hiyoko and created a closed space? And they also taped her up after killing her, right? Even quick work has limits. Oh, What unimaginable speed for a slowpoke like me! If they couldn't have done it while Hajime was away from the venue, they must have done it earlier than that. But when Hajime got to the venue, only Ibuki's body was there, right? And when you went back with everyone else, Kyoko's body was there too, right? But it's possible that the body was just revealed at that time, when Kyoko was actually killed earlier. Just revealed? Of course, the body wasn't revealed on its own. The killer did that too. Here! I have proof. Hmm, that scrap of paper. Is that what we found in the baton lighting at the music venue? That's right, but just what is this scrap anyway? Wallpaper in the storage room? In the music venue storage room, there should have been black wallpaper that's the same color as that scrap. There was also a tear along the edge of the wallpaper, wasn't there? If so, you're right. If you overlay the scrap that was caught on the lighting with the tear in the wallpaper, see? It fits perfectly! I see. 
So the scrap that was caught on the baton lighting was originally part of the wallpaper. And what's wrong with that? Does it have something to do with Yoko's body disappearing? A mere nobody like me isn't important enough to answer that. But if you guys were exceptional enough to identify that scrap of paper, you can figure this out easily. Coming together! Got it! Kyoko's body was hidden before we found it. But it would have taken quite a long time to tape up a hidden body. No, the body was already taped up and the killer hid it, along with the pillar using the wall. Paper. What? They hid the pillar? Yeah, by wrapping the wallpaper around the pillar, the killer was able to create a slightly larger pillar. So when I first discovered Ibuki's body, Kyoko's body was already there. However, because it was concealed within a slightly larger pillar, I didn't realize that at the time. Well, that's understandable. I mean, it makes sense that you'd notice Ibuki's body right away. So they use the baton lighting on the ceiling to hang the wallpaper? The baton lighting forms a perfect circle around the pillar. So using it to hang the wallpaper totally fits. Then, the reason the wallpaper was covered in so many stickers is to make it look like that pillar. That's how they hid Hyoko's body, and then peeled off the wallpaper as soon as I left the music thing. But the killer made a mistake. They accidentally ripped off a piece of the wallpaper. And because of that, a scrap was left on the baton lighting. The killer must have been in a hurry. Their plan took too long. Hajime could have walked in on them. But going to the trouble of hiding the body and the pillar is very bold and risky. But the crime itself would be much easier to pull off, since they don't have much to do while Hajime's gone. They just have to peel off that wallpaper and stash it in the storage room. It's not that big of a deal. Then, when was Hyoko actually killed? Good point. And on that note, it's about time we shed some light on those imitation murders. Um... You mentioned imitation murder more than once, but what is that? Are you kidding me? You haven't seen my masterpiece? 
the wizard of Monomy 2.5D? Hey! Don't put my likeness in your movies without my permission! You're pretty noisy for someone who eats mothballs! I don't eat mothballs! I just enjoy looking at them! I knew it! There are so many similarities, it must have been intentional. Ibuki's death by hanging matches the Scarecrow's death from the movie. Not just that, but Hyoko getting taped up after her death matches the lion's death. It's as if both crimes were replicas of scenes from the movie, although the mutilated Tin Man was omitted. But why did the killer go to all this trouble in the first place? Based on what we know, the reason the killer chose these imitations isn't that difficult to figure out. I see! The reason the killer imitated two of the murders from the movie was so he'd mix up the killing order. 